Hey everyone, welcome to the Tech Guys Banter podcast, where me and my friend Vishal we discuss about tech and any other random topics that we find interesting. Before we begin, let let me just introduce myself. My name is uh, Ankur. Uh, I am a tech professional working for a startup, and I am based out of Seattle, Washington area. Over to you, Vishal. Hi guys, um, welcome to Tech Banter podcast. I am Vishal. Um, I'm a software developer working for one of the big tech companies based in Seattle. I am in software development from last around 10 to 12 years. Awesome. And no banter is complete without drinks and uh, it could be any drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic. So, what are you drinking, Vishal? Cool. With me uh, today I have this is called coconut margarita. It has wow. it has um rum um a little bit of uh, coconut uh, lime simple syrup um yeah a cocktail made up wow. of all of that that's awesome that sounds very delicious mm nice and what do you yeah i am drinking uh, the finest chardonnay that you can buy for 10 dollars <laughs> in a grocery store uh yeah i i i love it so Cheers. Cheers, cheers Ankur. All right, so our uh, so today is our first episode of the Tech Guys Banter and we picked the most uh, interesting topic and the hottest topic going around right now which is uh, AI and we want to specifically discuss about the impact of AI on jobs. Uh we both do not uh, consider ourselves as experts on this topic but this is just about brainstorming and talking about how ai is going to impact the jobs currently and in the future we are probably going to be wrong about most of the things that we talk about uh, but hopefully you all will find it interesting what do you yeah, think michal de- definitely i think uh, this is all our perspective uh, this is something that we think uh, that will that will happen but uh, i i think we are not an expert and definitely uh, we cannot predict things so what what is like uh, how do you see ankur like how ai is going to impact job market yeah so i think uh, what i am seeing is already ai has started impacting many of the sectors and uh, this week i was just noticing uh, the quarterly results of multiple uh, companies that are seeing the effect of ai in their bottom line right so if you if you look at uh, companies that provide any kind of tutoring services uh, like chegg it is one of the major players where it helps uh, kids do homework uh, online and their stock had a 40% decline in just a mm. couple of days and that was... that's largely because their ceo said that uh, they have started seeing the impact of chat gpt uh, in like acquiring new customers so and that's very recent so if you see since march they say that they have started seeing a significant uh, interest in students of using chat gpt so yeah that's a, that that is one sector i feel is going to be largely impacted uh, or is already getting disrupted as we speak i think uh, in one day they lost um, like 40% of their stock value right there was a huge dip uh, in their stock price and same i think uh, same happened with uh, other related uh, companies who are in this sector as well right um, yeah there are like companies uh, who do similar kind of work like fiber where you can just hire a uh, <clears throat> uh, worker to do some mechanical uh, activities for you uh, like people hire their personal assistants maybe they are sitting in like another part of the world and you can like hire them for pretty cheap a uh, lot of times like 10 dollars or 20 dollars per hour and uh, so their stock has been impacted as well there are companies like upwork 
who are seeing like a similar kind of a trend uh, with chat gpt coming along yeah i think uh, overall i feel that um, any job that was more of uh, it has less creativity i will say uh, it was more monotonous um, it was on the verge of being automated somehow um, i think ai has just accelerated that right um, i i know bunch of um, like people who were doing jobs of pulling reports from database right so uh, i think uh, that kind of uh, shift we i am seeing that kind of shift right basically any job that was monotonous that that was to be automated in future ai has just accelerated that and we are seeing the effects right away right um within last 3 months i have seen like lot of shift in the job market regarding that uh, yes that's a great way of putting it basically chat gpt and ai has basically accelerated whatever was uh, like going to happen yeah um, it, uh, anything that was i think yeah if you were not adding value in a creative way uh, i think if you were just pulling reports pulling data from somewhere uh, trying yeah. to look make it look fancy i think yeah nobody is going to buy that going forward people are people are, like they have a tool which can easily do this all these things for them easily now right uh, yeah. so definitely there will be an impact on jobs but it will be more on the jobs that were i will say either monotonous or uh, laborious in kind uh, there are there are other kind of jobs as well right um writing as a job right there were lyricist uh, poetry writers uh, story writers right uh, there were there were writers for um, stand up comedy scenes uh, yeah i think now so traditionally you consider those jobs as creative right that's what uh, that's how we have grown up thinking that uh, like writers journalists yeah. uh, you are talking about like people who write poems or uh, comedy like we think those as like very creative jobs then how how are they getting disrupted like uh, yeah. uh, i so, will uh, so yeah, let me let me share one uh, like article uh, so recently maybe like last month uh, buzzfeed started adopting ai for generating and publishing articles um, and the stock market actually rewarded it uh significantly the stock went up uh, significantly in just one day uh and this is the perfect so, example of like people who are writing articles right their job is being replaced with ai today right so that's that's where the comment of like even writing right uh, if you are writing for someone probably you have to either find a better job or you have to up your skills and start integrating ai in your uh, daily life so that you can write better articles more productive in a more efficient way yeah so, yeah yeah definitely i i see like if you see in the beginning <clears throat> right like people started using chat gpt for college essay writings like that was one of the topics that i heard like in the yeah. initial phases of chat gpt right uh, and to be honest um i for my kid right um at that time around um, it was a new year and i went to chat gpt and i said can you write a new year poem for a 7 year old kid uh, who is interested in legos and mm-hmm. to be honest um, in the first try it didn't give me what i was hoping for but after mm-hmm. a couple of uh, iterations we got a decent uh, eight line poem so i think uh, i would have never written a poem on legos for an 8 year old right so <laughs> yeah i would it, think of it if it was like we did it as a fun part but let's say it was something which was very important to me i would have hired someone to do this but uh, that's very interesting how was the tone of that poem was it like did it sound like an 8 year old has written it or did it sound like somebody grown up uh, so written it the the initial this is in jan right so i think that time Uh, GPT-4 was still not there. We were still okay. on uh, GPT-3.5. So I saw that the AI was trying to rhyme words regarding Legos, right? Uh, definitely, mm-hmm. Lego Lego was the theme, 
and um, out of eight lines definitely in the first try four lines were completely off right they were not even rhyming properly they were not fitting in the context and then i said hey i like the first paragraph but the second paragraph is out of context can you reiterate and then it did one more reiteration so uh, on a it didn't sounded like it is written by an 8 year old but it sounded more of like few few words it was not like a like a writer or a poet like who has who has a po- whose po- poetry as as a profession right uh, he is writing it it was not like that for sure it was very small sentences uh, there was some rhyming words uh, in that uh, i think uh, we we felt pretty uh, good with it and we played with it but definitely neither my son nor me we remember that poem we, it, right. that that was just for a day or so we haven't framed it and said hey this is something that we are going <laughs> to cherish for life and definitely if uh, my kid comes up with a poem right first time and yeah. if it is of that quality we will cherish it we i probably i'm going to keep it safe yeah. for a long time right so it was not like that we we knew this is something that was generated by an ai and within couple of more prompts it will generate more content more easily right so i think we didn't we didn't value it much <laughs> it might be worth trying it with gpt4 i think Maybe. so we we have i haven't tried uh, with my kid about gpt4 Uh, yeah definitely i think uh, we should try that out cool uh, um i think uh, i also want to talk about the impact of ai that's happening on uh, art so like how digital art was getting generated uh, right so um so i think like people were uh, there were digital artists who would actually sit in front of a computer and with tablets or various kinds of other drawing and painting devices would actually create digital art and it's uh, it's like i always think of those kind of work as highly creative uh, but with this uh, so i tried out this new uh, tool called mid journey uh, awesome. which uses ai to generate uh, art right for you and it does it within like 30 to 60 seconds and the first time i tried it i was just blown away uh, by what i was seeing and it seems like like as we as we discuss this right like it's actually um, empowering artists to create 100x yeah, yeah. the amount of art that they could earlier obviously this is a topic that different people can take differently um uh, there is a plagiarism aspect to it as well because ultimately midjourn is probably reusing a lot of the existing art that's yes. already present over the internet and basically probably rehashing it as ai art so yes. i actually um, recorded a a demo uh, for this podcast so let's let's uh, go over it um, and sure. see how actually mid journey works wow what was the prompt that you gave uh i think i gave the prompt as uh, um stylized painting of seattle uh, at sunrise awesome. Okay, awesome let me see let me play it yeah so um these are the four things okay yeah so as you can see this is basically on discord uh mm-hmm. there's a mid journey bot i just gave it a prompt of stylized painting of seattle at sunrise and immediately the gpus are hard <laughs> at work uh it's generating the painting and you can see like earlier i had given it a prompt about i felt our this is like a retro nike shoe which it had generated this is an oil painting uh with lake and reflections looks pretty awesome so wow yeah it it can see as it is generating about 50% done these are some of the other artwork that i had generated using the bot and awesome. almost done here 93% 
So, Ankur, if you have to do this painting without AI, how long will it take? Uh, most probably, I won't be able to do it, uh, and it's probably going to take at least a day for some someone who is really talented, right? And see, you have four options. Uh, all of them look pretty good to me, and now I am uh, upscaling the second one uh, because second one is the one that I like the most. And like what? Like within a couple of seconds, you have an upscaled version. Oh, of a pretty goodness. pretty amazing looking painting you can actually print it out and frame it in your wow. home and the important aspect about this is this is unique right i i don't think this kind of painting is present um like at other stores or it's kind of a unique thing for you right so it i like unique. that that aspect as well right like uh, you can easily have cookie cutter things and you can buy those things but uh, when you use ai you gave a prompt uh, definitely some people might have given the same prompt and still might have got a different result right so yeah you can like i think it every time i give it the same prompt it still generates uh, some some unique images definitely so it's pretty pretty amazing pretty mind blowing um so basically whatever you imagine you can you are basically limited by your imagination you can imagine exactly. give it a prompt and just get the uh, result this is so amazing right we are we are we are at a right time like uh, in the history like in if you see the timeline of mankind's right like uh, we, we are living are at a very interesting time yes yeah, we are giving a prompt and it is generating uh, art for us like that's amazing yes so we looked at uh, mid journey creating images uh, of our choice uh, so naturally the next thing after images would be moving images so movies and uh, i remember vishal like maybe like less than one month back we both were talking that the real game changer will be when i could just give a prompt and it could generate a movie for uh, wow. me and uh, like i think it was this week or last week i already saw that's happening so let me just show you a uh, uh, a reddit post of that right so this is a post by a twitter user i found it while browsing uh, this is actually a what almost a two minute movie uh, completely generated by ai so all the characters you are seeing here are not real human beings but ai generated and uh, it's it's pretty crazy what wow. ai can do so let me just play it right okay so here is the movie which is completely ai generated and let's have a look wow so ankur is this an ad for something or it's just a someone is trying to play with i think AI. this is an experimental video Okay. but i think they are trying to create a ad for maybe like pizza <laughs> or or maybe some snack <laughs> yeah, yeah like folks having party yes. eating unhealthy food right <laughs> pizzas are not unhealthy uncle <laughs> pizzas yeah. have lot lot of protein <laughs> tell that to your kid <laughs> actually actually they All love right. it so there is another uh, a, a movie i i thought like we'll we'll check out like couple of them so let me get another one all right so this is another movie so the last one was more of a commercial this looks like a uh, actual like a documentary or a movie okay it's probably wow. some kind of a space program space ship yeah okay but see like if think of when you have to do this with real crew real cameras everything right yeah. like this is i i can't even imagine doing all these things by myself right like yeah and today just by buying this ai giving it the right prompt having patience i think patience is one of the key things that i'm learning with ai right you have to yeah like and then easily it can generate a video for you which you can use it for either marketing education learning um 
yeah i i loved it actually that, there was I think... an entry barrier right like for creating movies um uh, like a a kid in a dorm room or anybody for that matter like there was a huge entry barrier and a lot of it was solved with iphone i think like everybody has a phone in their hand so now they could record videos youtube you could publish uh but uh, like scenes like the one that we saw uh, like uh, shooting inside a spaceship exactly. there exactly. are a lot of barriers to that but i think ai completely kind of disrupts that which is which is uh, amazing i don't know like i'm i'm feeling excited <laughs> a little bit scary <laughs> uh, but mostly excited about uh, the future i think uh, if you see this right even the cost of production is going to go down like in future we are we are talking about impact on jobs but yeah. on the other hand we should also think about what will what what does it mean on the economy or the expenses that people are like today you can easily charge huge sum of money for providing a set right a shooting set in future do you think those sets will be worth that much people are going to that's gonna, a great point that's such a great point yeah people like, people are going to say i am just going to tell ai to do this set for me and i'm just going to use it in my content right like why do i have to go and rent your sets for such a high cost yeah so, yeah in that yeah. way it is a indirect impact to those those business uh, cases right those business models um, i think it is yeah i yes definitely same i have the same feeling a lot excited about the future with ai and a little bit scary yeah. i'm scared about people who are not able to move along with ai right like um, yeah they will get left behind and then it is going to be a problem right uh, yeah yeah 100% i think i think we we kind of uh, covered the industries or the jobs that are getting impacted uh, as we speak right now uh let's switch gears let's talk about our own industry tech how ai is uh disrupting our industry and what does the future look like right so uh i think um if you see as a software as an industry or tech as an industry right um yeah we are we are exactly at a peak point i will say right where we have the ability to make a huge change in the trajectory of technology right um, ai is one of that right like at at this point we all are working towards to make things uh, ai based uh, yeah. on if you if you uh, if you look uh, at your own like industry um, copilot is a perfect example i will say for how it is improving pro- uh, developers productivity um i have read numerous articles about it um about so we shall before just like before you talk about copilot like maybe for people who are not very close to programming or uh, like the advancements like github copilot maybe like a like what is uh, copilot if you could just like explain like in a sure. couple of sentences so uh, definitely uh, copilot is one of the products that is called as a um, ai pair programmer pair right so you as a developer or programmer let's say you are assigned a task to perform right like to code something and usually in olden times what you used to do is okay i have this set this task at my hand you will probably go and search on the web about that topic right and then you will read other developers they have provided uh, their code sections uh, snippets saying this is what i have done to achieve this thing and then you figure out uh, which of those matches your requirements you take it from there you modify according to your use case and then probably you test it out right yeah there was that was a lot of monotonous task like for every ta- like think i have i'm i'm a programmer and i definitely have to like solve 10 different things when i'm writing a code right and every time uh, i have to go search uh, the web try to find it and then use it right i think yeah. copilot is a product which is provided by github um, using that product basically uh, once you enable it um, 
in your uh, integrated development environment basically copilot is going to tell you he, it is going to do the all the hard work of going finding answers and trying to match the context right and it is going directly going to give you exactly what you need you can accept mm-hmm. it by just a tap button you just press one tap button all that work mm-hmm. of repetitive things that you were doing in the past are gone right so i have a mm-hmm. small small um, 60 seconds um, demo it shows like for a problem like how to write a binary search tree with pre order post order breadth first depth first search all of this can be achieved in 60 seconds with copilot okay so, awesome so let me put that okay uh yeah so in this code basically um what we are trying to do here is um it's a simple bu- uh, binary search tree like we want to implement a binary search tree right and yeah. uh, you see like i'm not typing anything all this is like suggested from ai right copilot is suggesting me like do you want to write this and it matches exactly my requirement i want a left side a right side in this binary search tree and yeah so the amount like it is thinking at this point and it thinks like hey you you should do an insert function and yeah i accepted it because definitely if you want to create a binary search tree you want to insert some data in that right and so that's very interesting so essentially you are just probably like tabbing out or just giving it a very small prompt of what I, you want and it's just auto completing it for you I, i didn't even give any prompt i just wrote the you name of the I, i just wrote the name of the class saying i want to create a binary search tree that's it and then i just ra- wait there and it suggests me the next next thing that i should do amazing so yeah it's very powerful like uh, to be honest um, in 60 seconds writing this much of code um, i i think uh, and 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 to have all the logic uh, built into that right um, yeah it's amazing so see this is the breadth first depth first search also right so in 60 amazing. seconds it did end to end so 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 you are a developer so let me ask you like uh is it true that about 90 to 95% of work for like building a feature is probably actually like finding out googling and uh, weighing in multiple solutions that are available and then basically maybe like 10% of it is actually like uh, putting your own creativity right and applying it for the specific problem that you are trying to solve so is it do you consider like something like a github copilot to like bring in at least 80 to 90% productivity gains i i think that's easy easily 80 to like definitely like if you see from a developer's perspective whenever you get a task right uh, like having consensus on how it should be done is separate design things are separate but when it comes yeah. to implementation right uh, when it when, when it comes to implementation you probably are like how to implement it right and then you go on web and you search it and then you try to find it and then you test it out yeah. so it is it is on the web there are multiple things i i will tell you right and this is my um, like first hand experience you can find yeah. some developers writing crappy code and you some people are having that code and testing it out they are putting it in production sometime and then later they realized when they hit the race condition right so with copilot uh, we have sort like i think that there is a lot of filtering done and we make sure like uh, only the good pieces comes out right like uh, definitely i don't say it's not buggy it, it can be buggy right but at least it is giving me the template uh, definitely as a developer you should still go ahead read all the code make sure it uh fits into your scenario but yeah. i think all the like remembering uh, syntax i think that yeah. is gone in this in this era i think earlier I, when i was um learning programming semicolon was yeah. one of the, one of the things that i used to forget most of the time <laughs> yeah and and in c sharp if you don't put a semicolon it will give you a compile error straight away and that was so like <laughs> i <Yeah. laughs> i remember sent, uh, syntax were one of the challenges initially right and we had few good uh, programming languages later uh, which simplified all those syntaxing things 
but think of this ai like it doesn't even care about your language and so basically um, i'm saying ai is has made all of those um, abstract to you syntax errors and all those things it will yeah it will take care of it so uh, yeah, yeah that's i think definitely um, i think developers productivity can be 10x at this point with copilot yeah that was a great great demo uh, so i think uh, in other words there was a concept of 10x developer now with tools like github chat gpt i think every developer can be 10x uh, easily i, I think uh, when you say developer right uh, coding is only one part of developer's life yeah uh, consensus on the concept and on the design is a different topic right uh, yeah let's say we start a new project the first thing that we have to decide is do you think we should do as as a mobile app do you think we should yeah. do it as a web application do you think it should be part of an edge device somewhere uh, so yeah do you want it to be on a cloud the cost analysis so there are so many things when when you do a product but when it comes to programming i think yeah. copilot ha- copilot has abstracted that layer for you right like today uh, the biggest challenge for any new startups and everything will be to provide a core value irrespective of how the product will be implemented once you figure out that piece of the puzzle i think it will become very easy for uh, the founders or the initial members of the team to go and implement it and yes. it is not costly as well copilot i think is not i think yeah it's at a at a very minimal uh, price you can get copilot yes awesome uh, since we are talking about ai and its impact on jobs and specifically right now we are discussing about tech and one thing that we have seen uh, and we are seeing as well is a uh, lot of layoffs that's happening in tech uh i think it started like almost like 6 to 8 months back and it's continuing right uh so vishal do you think uh, what do you think like the layoffs in I, the, what role does ai play in that is it related I, i don't think it is related right i mean ai is not at a point where it can literally replace uh, software developers or uh, jobs in tech right uh, it <laughs> it's the technology ai is still evolving it is still uh, in the development phase i will say uh, but the layoffs that happened in tech were mostly because of i think uh, the economy right overall uh, you, yeah. we have seen uh, like there is war going on right now uh, and uh, definitely so if you see your previous year in 2022 there was over hiring as well so yeah. now all these factors came together over hiring then you have economy shift uh, shift in economy and then i think uh, management also was keen to show uh, profits on their um, balance sheet uh, in interest of uh, like investors shareholders right so it was kind of um, like meta uh, has said that right this is a year of efficiency like yeah i think when they when they say this is a year of efficiency layoffs was one part of it right uh, cost cutting there is a lot of cost cutting happening in all these companies yeah so i think layoffs i will i don't see that as a like ai being impacting those like ai was the cause the reason behind it i i largely agree with you uh, but i do think their ai probably has some role to play which is i think a lot of the companies are anticipating large productivity gains yes. uh, because of ai and some of the because for some companies the layoff seems excessive to me so it is possible that the yeah. leadership is anticipating that there will be a lot of uh, productivity gains due to ai and maybe they are trying to like get ahead of it so maybe uh, yeah we will we'll find out uh, that is also a good uh, good point i will say ankur like you you bring it in the right point like maybe they are anticipating that and that is the reason yeah. they are trying to create a foundation for like hey we will have productive gain in productivity 
and we will do more with less resources right so that's amazing okay yeah okay so you want to talk about openheimer or uh, uh sure uh, i so uh, did you hear the recent news of the godfather of ai from google um, he left google yeah um, i so, read some stories about that yeah yeah if you um, like see that um, basically he said that um, he yeah he he said that uh, he's he want he's leaving google because he wants to talk about the dangers of ai right and he was the godfather of ai so it gives me like an analogy with uh, uh, robert oppenheimer who created uh, atomic bomb and later he said that now he became the death the destroyer of the world right so i think uh, it is not like definitely people should be worried about uh, ai but i don't think it is at that stage where where you you can say like um, it is going to destroy everything kind of right like uh, so i when when i read that news it gave me like the analogy of what happened with in the, that era right uh, that technology in this world today we have bombs but we have regulations around it and humanity as in is still protected by all these things right so same thing will eventually happen with ai as well uh, we will create a very powerful ai but it will be regulated so that it doesn't harm humans right so it we are we are in the making of that and this is the right time to go pitch in for that and make sure we have the right rules and regulations around it and on the same topic um, i i read something like elon musk was saying let's pause ai right i i yeah. don't buy i don't buy into that right like mm-hmm. how can you how can you let let's say you can make uh, united states to follow that right how can you make sure it is followed by other countries as well yeah so eventually someone is going to do that right and they later on the countries who are not participating in this they are going to play catch up game and to be honest i believe elon musk itself like he said he wants to pause ai on the very yeah. same week he said he wants to create an ai for twitter like mm-hmm. i think he even on his personal friend i think he is trying to do a catch up game here right he is trying to play a catch up game here yeah i actually i actually love your analogy of the nuclear um, arms race that happened during the world war 2 era um uh, and yeah like to some extent i think there are like lot of similarities uh the only way to uh protect yourself against um like the nuclear weapons was to like develop your own nuclear weapons right so if uh us stops or pauses ai development then other countries uh, might take a huge lead right and then you are left behind so i yeah i agree with you that i don't think like there like just pausing everything uh is not the right answer but yeah some type of regulation so that ai is not being used for nefarious uh outcome it's probably something that we should definitely uh, i think look into oh, everybody should have an open discussion about this because this is the right time right um uh, still the control is within our hands we can we can still play uh, a major role in forming this structure so i think it it should be open for discussion rather than close and saying we should pause for ai development yes awesome so vishal we have discussed how ai has impacted some industries and jobs and then i think we had a good discussion about the impact of ai on tech currently uh and its implications on ethics around ai uh let's talk about what does the future look like right what are the new kinds of jobs that are going to emerge uh with ai disrupting everything so i i'll, I'll start by like talking about how i think about it right so like if we think from first principles uh, i feel like ai is just mis- making all of us much more efficient right 
so yeah. before as you were talking about like coding right like lot of coding actually involved uh, looking for various solutions uh, on the internet and then finding the best solution that you could find right i think ai is just basically auto completing all of that and is probably like finding the most efficient solution because if i was actually looking for some answers on google i am actually not i'm probably like choosing the best from the top five results at most i'm not even like looking at page 2 but ai has the capability to like find out possibly the most efficient answer right um, so i think a lot of uh, that uh, work which is not really like creative will be replaced by ai actually yeah, yes night i was uh, listening to a podcast and brian chesky the ceo of airbnb was actually talking about like ai and how his company is basically preparing themselves for leveraging ai and he gave a very good example which i loved was uh, like photography right photography used to be the thing that uh, um, like only like artists and people who really had a great understanding about light and different types of lenses and like filters when i say filters i mean like physical filters not the instagram yeah. filters uh and then you had to have like all this equipment apparatus flash and only then like you could like take great pictures um and that too like you had to use film and then you had to develop it you never knew what is going to be the final result right so there was like lot of uncertainties and entry barrier associated with photography and uh, with iphone coming and then uh, apps like instagram and like many other like photography apps it kind of made photography uh, possible by anybody in the world basically like like yeah. kids with no knowledge about lenses and how light works can take like great pictures yes. so it has basically democratized photography and great pictures and the amount of pictures and photos in the world has only increased Exactly. it has probably increased like i don't know like 10000x right so he was saying that with ai coming it's going to just make everything more uh, democratized more accessible and democratized for everybody right like if i am a uh, i want to like uh, start a new company a new app with a idea that i have and maybe i don't know how to code uh, or i don't know how to design Uh, but now i have ai as a tool that i can leverage Isn't. but i need to know how to leverage i need to have that creativity that what i want to build exactly uh, so i love that uh, like uh, articulation by brian chesky uh, and it's very simple but i think it kind of summarizes uh, and paints a very positive picture of where ai can ai is take take us right and i i completely um, i think agree with your thought over there um because if you see like your example of cameras right now if you go to any tourist spot earlier i used to see everybody carrying a dslr with huge yeah. lenses right like yeah. and now now if i go to any tourist spot there are phones who are taking pictures they they don't no one is carrying those huge dslrs right uh, anymore so the reason for that is this small device now has equivalent capabilities um what dslr uh, dslr were providing right so i think yeah. same thing is going to happen with ai with every product that, that will have ai capabilities it is going to provide you more with less resources uh, in a very uh, economically viable uh, way so yes. i think uh, ai is going to create uh, many opportunities right um, Yeah. it is going to it is going to remove barriers to many uh, places where earlier people were not able to go right um, yeah for an example this is not very specific to an ai uh, problem earlier education right uh, if you wanted to do an education from a prestigious institute there was a big barrier of how you get an admission you reach there you should be able to uh, survive in that environment nowadays yeah. with online education everybody is readily like there are so many courses right mit has an open course where right uh, yeah khan khan academy is one of 
like where you can learn uh, courses without any charge right so the, that is how the shift is going on but with ai that will accelerate actually yeah it is going to accelerate like there will be no one on one tutoring required ai is going to do one on one tutoring with you right so yeah. see the benefit that is it is going to bring in is huge um, it is going to create some um, like there are very specific ai related jobs to be honest in this market right uh, yeah. one of one of the topics that i like earlier when i was looking at ai i came across was prompt engineering yeah so prompt engineering is nothing but um, a way you can make ai more accurate and more performant mm mm-hmm. uh, with prompt engineering basically you take this uh, large language models and you train them to your specific needs mm mm-hmm. mm uh in that way once they are trained in that fashion uh they are going to solve your particular business case um either it can be uh, uh support customer support it can be marketing or it can be uh, even uh, knowledge base right like think of onboarding today when you go and you want you have a new hire and you want to onboard them to a product it's so challenging because they have to read through bunch of documentation they have to learn bunch of new technologies think right. of it like there will be a bot right that will be an onboarding buddy for you and this onboarding buddy you ask him a question hey i found this problem and it is giving you an answer right away right so yeah. in that sense um, this all can be done through prompt engineering you will take these large language models you will train them with your data set and with the input that like if you are uh, making a movie right uh, your prompts will be different you will keep yeah. on asking ai related to movie related uh, scope only right but if you are in a customer care uh, service sector your prompts are going to be different so you train your ai according to that prompts and there is a huge uh, job market right now for prompt engineering yeah uh, uh, companies ai companies who are building ai models they need people who have a uh, um, who can catch the uh, delta between input and output expected outputs right uh, when you give a prompt to an ai and you train the ai according to that like that there is there is one good uh, topic in prompt engineering where you give the expected input and output both and mm-hmm. ai will learn like if i get this input this is the output that i expect that is mm-hmm. a way of training the ai right through prompt engineering and supervising it yeah yeah ex- ex- actually it's uh, semi supervised right so I think Are there the, companies already hiring for prompt engineers? Yeah, it means um, this is happening from last three months. I have seen many job openings for prompt engineering. Uh, they are uh, well paid, also, right? Like because it's a very uh, niche. niche market, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, because you have to be creative enough to give correct prompts. Mm-hmm. As an engineer, they will they will hire this prompt engineer. They will train him on the domain that this is the domain. this is the business case that we are trying to solve now you go and talk to this ai in a way where the ai becomes more smart and more performant now this is your skill to create prompts like like how we used to think about creating test cases earlier right how we used mm. to think about uh, writing unit tests right similarly mm. prompt engineering is not only the testing pieces piece of it but it is also feeding into ai to make it more um, accurate so i think of it as uh, uh, i actually i actually don't know what prompt engineer really does but this is what i am how i am thinking about it there is a gold rush ai gold rush right which yes. is there is, we know that there is a huge potential in terms of uh, financial outcomes that we can have uh, behind this large language models and prompt engineers are probably the person who is mining those large language models to get the outcome that you want right so uh, if you know how to create the right prompts so that you can get the right right outcome then basically you have the riches to exploit right otherwise yeah. uh, you don't so yeah it's it's very interesting like a typical software engineer needs to know about data structures algorithms uh some of the computer hardware but what 
what is the like the academic background that a prompt engineer would need to have right i uh, think uh, yeah it's yeah. a it's a creative field yeah right i think uh, means from engineering background um, like one thing is important is you you understand how things are working right so if you hire a prompt engineer and he probably if he doesn't know anything about uh, what what is the role of this job right uh, how it is helping the ai and the company to meet the customer needs i think that will not be a right fit right the right fit will be probably someone who understands that there is a big language model behind it uh, there is a huge amount of data that has been provided to it but now when i ask a question it has to suffice some customer needs so bridging yeah. that gap i think that is the biggest uh, qualification for prompt engineering right someone who can bridge that gap right um, if ai is giving you an output are you able to validate the quality of the output are you able to say that this is what was expected from the customer or not yeah so i think that is one of the it, it's not about data structures or coding or algorithms here anymore right it is all that is like abstracted now that is abstracted now 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 it is more of like are you creative enough to understand like uh, what kind of prompts you should generate right uh, are you able to see the success like i will tell you one one example in my initial yeah. years right when when i before like i just passed out college uh, one of my mentors i asked him like hey i have created a small uh, it was not ai i created small probability algorithm where uh, you give the data to that algorithm and it it will uh, out of 10 uh, sorry i said i ran the model and it is 90 uh, sorry 85% correct mm -hmm. and i was to be honest i was very happy about it i was like mm -hmm. i i have made something which can predict 85% time correct mm -hmm. and then i went to my mentor and he said are you crazy 85 is nothing it's garbage and i was confused like how 85 can be garbage he said that means every 10 times we put a request to that 1.5 times it will fail it will give a wrong result mm -hmm. so that means this like i am pretty sure that out of 10 1.5 time it is wrong so i cannot put it in production or anywhere right and i said i yeah. asked a question uh, like following question to my mentor i said what is the expected accuracy that you are looking forward he said 99.99 is the accuracy that i need to put anything in production and yes. that time it triggered me that means every 10000 request one failure they are considering that right like they yeah. anything below that it is not a like no go for them yeah so yeah. a person like if someone is like very new like I, when i was new right and he sees a result of hey my my 90% of the time i am passing on this right and they feel happy about it i think we need to correct that uh, assumption we have to make sure uh, that is not the right outcome that we are looking from an ai yeah yeah and uh, like on those lines right being a testing professional i was thinking about if i had to test these language models right what would be the approach so uh, again like i'm thinking out loud here i have not done it myself uh, but i think like at a very high level there are there is probably going to be a, a quantitative and a qualitative uh, testing to uh, this uh, area right so quantitative is probably going to be easier because uh, you can do things like okay is the model learning correctly and how many inputs does it require to really produce good quality output uh, and uh, like what is the cost right there is a large cost factor associated with running this uh, llms that today we don't think about so much we are just putting something uh, a question to chat gpt and it's uh, responding back but there are like like thousands of gpus running to actually produce that output right so a lot of uh, optimization will be possible i think uh, uh, in that area uh, and then the time it requires for you to like give an output i think that will be a big quantitative thing that we can measure but i think the main challenge is going to be qualitative right which is okay i asked a question to 
uh, LLM and uh, it responded back. But is it really able to mimic artificial intelligence, right? Does the answer sound great or not, right? Uh, I think that's going to be the real challenge. Like there, there will not be one or two large language models. There will be like, I think there will be like hundreds. All of yeah. these things are going to be commoditized, right? So the true winners will be the ones that can really produce high quality outputs. And I think the quality will depend a lot on like what looks good to you, Vishal, may not look good to me. So there'll be like a personalization aspect to the uh, responses mm -hmm. and i think uh, like testing for that is going to be a real challenge and possibly like similar to prompt engineering uh, like a new evolution of a job that's coming like people AI, can really AI. test that effectively. ai tester i'm just giving it a name ai tester will be yeah, tester. will be the new yeah. thing right <laughs> yeah I think I when I think about testing of AI, to be honest, for me, I have always thought about testing as an expected and uh, actual output comparison, right? Yeah. Um, here, I don't know how to formulate <laughs> expected and actual, right? Because, yeah, every time it changes, right? So uh, maybe we need an AI to test an AI. <laughs> oh, that's that's a, that's a great. Uh, great food for thought, actually. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how all these new technologies get built and tested. Uh, all right, Vishal, I think we have had a good discussion so far. Uh, I think we discussed about what the future uh, may look like in terms of uh, jobs, new jobs, or existing jobs getting impacted. Let's talk briefly about the jobs that are immune to AI. So the jobs that we think uh, are not going to be much impacted by AI, right? Uh, it could be a good thing or maybe like how you look at it, it could be like a, maybe not, not, not such a good thing because you are, uh, you cannot like leverage the power of AI, right? So uh, yeah, what do you think? What kind of jobs are immune to AI? I think uh, any job that is that provides you um, content, right? Uh, any 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 job which is physical, right? Like let's say a gym instructor, right? Um, for me, gym instructor is someone who motivates you, who trains you in a way which is which fits your uh, cycle. Like they they understand you as a person, right? Um, and then they will like I know you can push till this limit and you can go this far and they motivate you to go there, right? Uh, they will literally be with you in the gym, uh, doing things with you, showing you how to do things, correcting your postures, correcting your, uh, like, I think those kind of jobs, right? Any job that is uh, having that aspect, right? Uh, a connection with a human aspect, right? Uh, I think those jobs for now, I see, yeah, they are immune to AI for now, right? Like, I don't think AI is going to take over any of their jobs. So yeah. uh, do you have a few examples, Ankur? Yeah, on similar lines, I think uh, like if you like like to play tennis and want to work on your backhand and you want to hire a coach, I don't think an AI is coming and uh, taking that job away anytime soon. So yeah. any kind of training, as you said, will be very difficult for ai to uh, disrupt which which is which which is good uh, i think also like a lot of uh, yeah like i think uh, there is a, like it's there is a concept of like moving bits and moving atoms so okay. i think all the jobs that move bits are going to be largely uh, impacted by ai uh, so like a lot of knowledge work a lot of software related work but wherever it uh, is about moving atoms, so like let's say like delivering your Amazon package or uh, like ski instruction uh, or gym training, I think those are going to be uh, not disrupted so much uh, by one, AI. There is one job that will never be disrupted by AI, right? That is babysitting. 
like <laughs> ai ai will never be able to do babysitting i think so right like uh, it because that is that is an area where yeah i have seen parents get paranoid if the uh, caregiving is not good it is not good for the kid right there are so many rules and regulations around it so definitely i think uh, hey, you have not are... heard about uh, ipads uh, with uh, some type of cartoon or <laughs> game <laughs> playing <laughs> on it <laughs> oh my god so i think yeah those those are to engage kids right like to yeah yeah one uh, so on this aspect i think there is a specific area which is which lies somewhere in between like the bits and atoms that i talk talked about uh, which is uh, self driving cars right so mm-hmm. that's that's a very interesting area tesla cruise and many other cutting edge uh, technology companies are working on it right which is solving the hard problem of driving um, and i was thinking about it and i i've seen a lot of uh, videos um, Uh, of like i think cruise with cars in san francisco like self driving cars in san francisco right driving through like busy roads uh, and navigating pretty well uh, but i think it that is probably only possible in places like uh, us uh, cities like san francisco where the traffic is largely predictable imagine like driving the uh, self driving car in uh, the busy streets of new delhi or kolkata oh, no i think way. there is like no chance right i i um, yeah I, like anybody who has actually lived in those cities or driven in those cities uh, like the day uh, ai is able to do that drive a car in the busy streets of mumbai or delhi i think that uh, that's i think it, biggest it will i i thought about this right and i think if you take that model car like that ai put it in delhi or kolkata street it will just stand there for the whole like forever because there is so much traffic right um, i think it will not be able to move right so so this is actually a video of uh, a self driving car driving i think on the streets of san francisco uh, i think the company is uh, called cruise uh which has like you could actually if you go to san francisco you can actually uh hail a ride from cruise so i am planning to do that the next time i am in the bay area it's pretty oh, amazing yeah. right <laughs> yeah this is cool actually so are they is it a learned model or is it learning on the fly right so i yeah i i don't think it is learning on the fly it, okay uh, they had lot of supervised learning they did a lot of testing uh, i think like 3 years back uh, they were doing a bunch of tests uh, on the roads and i think they finally got the permission to uh, start it commercially wow this is amazing awesome so this was a great talk with you ankur uh, loved having this uh, discussion about uh, impact of ai um so what are your final thoughts on this now how do you summarize this uh, in your... yeah yeah i also i i thoroughly enjoyed uh, our first episode on tech guys banter um uh, i think uh, overall i learned a lot uh, just like thinking out loud and discussing with you about how uh, ai uh, is going to change things in our life uh there is i think lot of good and maybe some unknown areas so i'm largely super excited about uh, how ai is going to impact our lives uh, but i would be i'd be lying if i didn't say that i'm maybe a little bit anxious a little bit scared uh, because especially because like lot of people that are very smart much much smarter than me are worried like uh the google vp elon musk raising some concerns uh but i think so far i have seen like most of the technologies have turned out to be good for mankind uh initially we all are scared but eventually we look back 
uh, fondly uh, about the technology, right? So yeah. uh, I'm largely excited and uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's see what the future holds for us. Uh, whatever do you, what, what did uh, you think? Uh, so for me, I, I think I'm on the same page with you. Um, one thing is very important, like what I consider very important is it should be very responsible AI, right? The development of this AI, should we should take it very responsibly. Uh, there is no need to panic, but there is a need to talk about it, uh, be upfront, uh, form regulations around it, uh, make it safe, more and more safe. I think uh, the more development in AI we do, it is going to definitely uh, have more productivity. Uh, it, will, it will give more time to uh, mankind for doing things that they love rather than doing the repetitive kind of uh, work, right? So AI, I see AI as a very positive thing. Um, the impact, we discussed about impact, there will be more impact. So there is, I, the people getting, people usually get worried about job impacts, right? Like uh, whether it is going to take away my job, right? So yeah. my, my take on that is, AI is not going to take away your job, but a person with AI is going to take away your job. So it is always better to be prepared, uh, start incorporating uh, AI into your work, um, be that person who is more productive with AI, and uh, you are adding more value to any organization that you work for. Um, if you are able to do that, I think, yeah, you don't have to worry too much that AI will take away your job, right? So. Uh, keep upgrading your skills. Uh, be on the lookout for new opportunities. I think that's how I see, um, and I consider AI to be a positive thing that is happening right now. Awesome! I think that's very, very well summarized, Vishal. And I think that's almost the end of our podcast. So uh, thank you, Vishal, and thank you anybody that listened or watched this. Uh, podcast. Hopefully, we'll have uh, more of these in sure. the future. And all right. Bye, everybody.